to able assistance. Uh, I had the last on, on our last meeting, I had uh, the subject about Ecolompadius. And uh, despite the title, I began with Ecolompadius because uh, Ecolompadius was an interesting person uh, in connection to the Lord's Supper. Both persons, both persons, Ecolompadius and uh, Melanchthon, were from Germany with unusual names. In E volume eight, we read before describing the member of antitypical Jacob who initiated the little flock movement that crown lost leaders perverted into the Baptist church, we should call attention to the fact that in starting each little flock movement, which was later turned into a sectarian system, while the Lord used one special brother, most prominently, he always supplied him with an able assistant, apparently on the principle exemplified in the Gospels, in Jesus sending out his messengers two by two. Thus, St. John was assisted by Polycarp, Irenaeus by Tertullian, Luther by Melanchthon, and there we are. So we had uh, several subjects before. We had the subject about Luther, we had the subject about Swingley, and now we had Ecolompadius. Now we will turn on to Melanchthon. As an example of deepest thinkers who delve down into the deepest recess of human thought in their search for religious truth and who found it in the Bible alone as a divine revelation, we may cite as outstanding examples the following. And we see as well on the end, as well swingly. Uh, it is gone. We see as well as Swingley, Ecolompadius, Luther, and Melanchthon. If we go to Melanchthon, Philip Melanchthon was born on 16th February in 1397 in Breton and died on 19. 19th April of 1560 in Wittenberg. The name Melanchthon is a translation of his original name. His original name in German was Schwarzerd, and it was translated into Greek Melanchthon. Uh, it was it is in, in in English it would be Black Earth. So the translation into Greek of Black Earth is Melanchthon. And uh, uh, Melanchthon was born not far away the place where I live. It is about 32 miles from the place where I live. We see even Brother Russell mentioned in the first volume on page 23. Out of the slavery came a bold and beneficial struggle for freedom and the Bible in what is known as the Reformation. God raised up courageous champions of his word, including Luther, Zwingli, Melanchthon, Wycliffe, Knox, and others. So we see both servants, as well as Brother Russell, as well as Brother Johnson, 
mentioned Melanchthon in their works. Philip Melanchthon. At birth, he carried the name of Philip Schwarzart, as we said. His father originally came from Heidelberg, where he held the office of the Master of Arms of the Prince Elector. He was the oldest of five children. A busy trade route led through the market square of Breton on which the family home was located. In the picture, you can see the half timbered houses of today's Breton. These houses were rebuilt with little funds after the fire of 1689. It is said that even the birth house of Melanchthon was more beautiful of these houses which now exist in Germany today. As a young child, Philip was able to hold discussion with scholars passing through because he was a very well educated in Latin. Seven years old Philip experienced the siege of Breton. In 15 Oh, four, the town of Breton was besieged. The town walls and the town were shelled. Parents took their children to cellars for protection. The grandfather of Philip, Hans Reuter, was a kind of big merchant. He traded in wine, grain, clothes, and leather. His wife was the sister of the humanist John Röcklin. The grandfather had three sons, two of whom became priests. The fourth child, his daughter Barbara, was the mother of Philip Melanchthon. And uh, if you look at this picture, you see it is a muse museum, or the Melanchthon Museum, and you see Brother Jack talking with the guide of the museum. It was said of the father of Philip that he knelt in front of his bed at 12 o'clock at night to say prayers. The father of Philip fell ill after being poisoned and died four years later. A few days after the death of his grandfather, Philip had no conception of illness and death. Philip was called to his father father's deathbed. He spoke with his father two days before his death. The father exhorted the son to fear God and decency and commanded him the protection and blessing of God. The father spoke of terrible changes in the world. I have seen many great things in the world, but greater things are yet to come. May God guide and govern you. After a farewell from his dying father, the 11-year-old Philip was taken to relatives to Speyer. Thereafter, he attended a Latin school in Pforzheim for one year. Philip ranked highly above all others as the most gifted student. He also, at that time, learned Greek. At the age of 12, he was able to enroll at the University of Heidelberg. He resided with the theologian Pallas Spangel. He was awarded the Bachelor of Arts degree at the earliest possible date on June 10 in 1511. In the three years at the university, you can see at the picture, it is the university in Heidelberg uh, of today, uh, even worldly good known university. In the three years at the university, he had developed his language skills in Latin and Greek. A professor at the University of Heidelberg once asked, where can I find the Greek among you? to which everyone replied Melanchthon. Philip also studied Greek literature and the Hebrew language. 
1512, at the age of 15, Philip wanted to earn a master's degree, but the professors in Heidelberg refused to admit him. He then continued his studies in Tübingen. In Tübingen, Philip also rededicated himself to Latin and Greek, reading Greek and Latin poets and philosophers, making him a true humanist. In 1514, he became a teacher at the University of Tübingen. Philip was engaged in translation from Latin and Greek. And for all, for all his achievements, Philip was still searching. The theological lectures of that time did not stimulate him. He always carried and read a Latin Bible given to him by his great uncle Rackley. In 1518, he published a Greek language teaching. Philip was at the site of his great uncle Recklin in the dispute with Cologne Cathedral Canons who were hostile to the Jews and wanted to destroy Jewish writings. The publication of the 95 thesis on 31st of October, 1517 did not seem to have touched Philip particularly. So we see uh, our brother Luther as he published the 95 Thesis in Wittenberg. And in Wittenberg, we find also a memorial of Melanchthon. In the spring of 1518, Duke Frederick the Wise, Elector of Saxony, appointed the 21 years old Philip Melanchthon to teach Greek at the University of Wittenberg. John Recklin encouraged Philip with the Bible text in Genesis 12, 12. Go from your father's country and from your friendship and from your father's house to a land that I will show you and I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thee a great name and so shalt be a blessing. He arrived in Wittenberg on August 25 in 1518. On August 29 in 1518, he delivered his introductory speech in Wittenberg in Latin. The content, <coughs> the content of which was something like this, back to the old languages, back to the Greek and Hebrew, besides Latin, back to the sources and back to the Bible. Philip was small and lanky and had a slight speech impediment. Yet the students were captivated by the young teacher with the intellectual features, the far-sighted thoughts and his melodious language. Luther said, I desire no other teacher in Greek as long as this man remains to us. Luther attended his lecture in Greek is saying, I thank my good Philip for teaching us Greek. I am older than he. That alone does not prevent me from learning from him. I say it freely. He understands more than I, of which I am not at all ashamed. Luther and Melanchthon were friends until the end of their lives. Melanchthon soon became a disciple of Luther and attended Luther's lectures on the biblical books and the services in the Wittenberg City Church. After merely one year, he earned the first theological degree, that of the Baccalaureus Biblicus, whereby he was obligated of holding lectures on some of the biblical books. Philip found a delicious pearl in Jesus Christ and his gospel, and what he found in the beginning of 1519, he kept and talked and wrote about until God completed him and called him home. 
more and more Melanchthon based himself on the Holy Scripture and uh, Luther uh, had to say about his interpretation of the Psalms and other biblical writings, this little Greek surpasses me even in theology. Melanchthon, however, in his modesty and respect for Luther always wanted to be only his assistant. He was already concerned about Luther in 1519, when he had to appear before Cajetan in Augsburg. He supported him at Leipzig disputation, stood with his students next to him when he burned the Pope's bull of excommunication in front of the Elster Gate in Wittenberg on December 10th in 1520. He feared for him when Luther was at the Diet of Worms and he did not know for a long time what had become of him on the journey home. He stood up for Luther when he had married Katharina von Bora in 1525 and was reviled for it. But Melanchthon also saw Luther standing at his sickbed in Weimar in 1540. There he lay near death and heard how Luther struggled for his life with God. Melanchthon was exhausted by mediating in theological disputes and on the journey to Hagenau fell ill in Weimar, where up in Luther said, God forbid, how this tool has been violated for me. And in both studies rooms, at the table in the garden of Melanchthon House, at conferences and on walks, both men stood on and on in conversation about the Holy Scriptures and the relationship of the Catholic Church and their ceremonies. Ulrich Wingley once said, I will have no other judge over me than the Holy Scriptures. This was also true for Luther and Melanchthon. Even before Swingley's appearance, this was the only great concern of the two reformers, which they testified to each other in word and writing before emperor and empire, indeed before the whole world of that time, until the day when Philip Melanchthon had to deliver the memorial address to his venerable fatherly friend Martin Luther at his burial in Wittenberg. In Psalm 119, before kings I will speak of the testimonies and not be ashamed. Here we have on the right side the seal or the coat of arms of Philip Melanchthon. Um, we have indeed uh, two seals. And the left one is the seal of Philip Melanchthon and the right one is the seal of, of the, his father. So we are, we, we are interested in the left one. Um, the, the seal of Philip Melanchthon, uh, the, raised, the raised serpent as a symbol of redemption. He refers to John 3.14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The seal on the right side was the seal of the family Schwarzerd. So, Philip Meranstand, said about John Wessel. He taught many points of, evangel of evangelical doctrine just as we do. Now that the church is reformed and God is shining the glorious light of the gospel again in a wonderful way. The writings of Wessels are good. So we see uh, the um, the prince of the spirit was Wessel, and uh, Luther and uh, Swingley was a star member of this period. And uh, we see that uh, 
that Melanchthon and Luther saw very positively John Wessel. Melanchthon uh, married in Wittenberg. His daily routine in his house in Wittenberg at 7 a.m. there was the morning service. In the house rules was the daily morning prayer. In addition, there was daily Bible reading in the morning. There were always students living in the Melanchthon house. Before Luther's journey to Worms, he said to Philip, if I do not return and my enemies murder me at Worms, as can easily happen, I implore you, dear brother, do not cease from teaching and persevering in the truth. <laughs> Luther brought the manuscript of the New Testament with him from the Wartburg and reviewed it with Philip in Wittenberg. So we say in Germany, we say uh, uh, Luther translated the New Testament but uh, often it is forgotten that a great deal made uh, uh, Melanchthon in this work. On April 1524, Philip went on a journey to his hometown Breton after many years. Luther said, you travel dear brother Philip in God's name. After all, our Lord did not always preach and teach, but was also often on the road. But what I ask of you, come back to us soon. I will include you in my prayer day and night. And with this, you go. When Philip was before Britain, he spoke, O fatherland earth, how I thank thee, Lord, that I may treat it again. During his day in Britain, the Decan of the philosophical faculty and two other professors from the university came and presented Philip with a silver cup. But also the secret scribe of the papal legate Campeggio appeared and tried to get Philip away from Luther and to return to the old phase. <coughs> In a memorandum which he gave to his men for Campeggio, he sided entirely with Luther, emphasizing the sole binding force of Holy Scripture and rejecting the mass and the legacy. On June 8, 1524, Philip left Breton. On his way home, he met Landgrave Philip of Hesse, who invited them to his castle, but Philip declined. The Landgrave took a wait and see attitude towards the Reformation. The Landgrave then received from Philip Melanchthon a summary of the Reformation thoughts. Thereafter, the Landgrave stood up for the Reformation. On this return journey, there was another sad event, which was very close to Philip. Wilhelm Nesen, a travel companion of Philip, drowned in the Elbe. Philip advocated the improvement of youth education in Wittenberg. This pleased Luther and he was of one mind with Philip. Many cities founded new schools, especially Nuremberg, Eisleben and Magdeburg. Melanchthon became the organizer of these Latin schools which later gave rise to the gymnasium with Latin and Greek as the main subjects. For 26 years, he had been in the most friendly contact with Luther, worked together with him and rarely separated from him. His words were peculiar. The pain that rages in my heart is indescribable as when two travelers go one and the same way, and after they have gone it for a long time, one falls down dead and the other wails. So I wail after the loss 
of my Lutta. I always thought I would leave the world before him, and yet I still have to survive him. Who knows what the Lord has decided about us, for I now see that I have not yet worked hard enough. Therefore, the Lord lets me still live. Also, I must work because it is day. I praise Luther happily that he did not experience any wars because of religion. I may not be so happy. The biography of Luther written by Melanchthon soon became one of the most widely read writings. In the last years of his life, he had to witness how many of his friends preceded him in death. His wife died in his absence. He was in Heidelberg on October 11 in 1557, Justus Jonas on 9th of October 1555, and Johannes Bugenhagen on 20th of uh, August in 1558 in Wittenberg. He continually improved his books or completely rewrote them until he was satisfied with them. He wrote three commentaries on the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, which was, according to Melanchthon, the most significant book of the New Testament. And uh, this is especially interesting because um, Melanchthon was together with Luther and discussed against Swingley and Ecolampadius. And uh, Swingley had the right view of the Lord's Supper. And uh, on this time in 1929, when, when the discussion was in Marburg, Melanchthon was on the side of Luther. And he um, was, had the same view as Luther and was against Zwingli. And now I, I read uh, an, an interesting thing. There is a, a book in Germany from uh, one professor which uh, studies the life of Melanchthon. He is still alive. And there is uh, even uh, a, a kind of a university where they study the life of Melanchthon. And uh, this man is Hans Scheible and he wrote in his book on page 125-126, with his old student Melanchthon. He wrote, he write about Melanchthon. With his old student friend from Tübingen, Öko Lompard, the now authoritative theologian of the city of Basel, he conducted a scholarly correspondence on the Lord's Supper which gradually led him away from the strictly Lutheran position. Melanchthon <coughs> warned wherever he could against the communion doctrine of the Swinglings, against which he wanted to write a book. It never appeared. For the thorough study of the history of theology took his opinion of the correctness of the Lutheran understanding of the Lord's Supper. That is very interesting, dear brothers. At, at, at the end, he went away from Luther, Luther's opinion and took the right position of Swingley and Ecolampadius. And uh, it was after, after the death of Luther. So we see that um, only Luther and uh, today the Lutheran Church have still the, the opinion that there is a real presence of, of, uh, of, the, of uh, Jesus in the bread and his blood in the wine, of the blood of Jesus in the wine. There's a real presence. This, is, this was the sort of Luther. And uh, the sort of thing was that uh, it represents the body of Christ. The, the bread represents the body of Christ, and the, the wine represents the, the, blood, of, the blood of Christ. And uh, we see 
that uh, Swingy and Ecolombardius had the right opinion. And even, even Melanchthon on the end took the right position. That I think is very interesting from uh, this side. And, and I, I looked, uh, uh, I heard about it when I was in the museum, but I wanted to convince myself uh, if there is any evidence for it. Yes, indeed, there is. On the evening of uh, his life, Philip became more silent. The disease plucked him. He understood the time and wrote about it. The disease I bear with patience. I will lead me to it. It will lead me to that school where my mind will learn more. On a trip to Leipzig in 1560, he fell ill. He had been preparing for death for a long time. In spite of the ethics of weakness, he had from time to time, he had had from time to time since Leipzig, he continued his lectures. On April 11, he gave an edifying lecture early at 6 a.m. And on Good Friday, April 12, he spoke on Isaiah 53. Truly, he bore our sickness. This was his last public address. On Saturday, April 14, he wanted to give another speech, but it was canceled without his knowledge. Camararius, who studied 1521 in Wittenberg, came to Philip and the two took leave. Philip said, my dear Joachim, we leave. We have been good friends for 40 years. If it is God's will that I die, let us continue our friendship in the life to come. On the evening of April 19, his son-in-law, Kaspar Poika, asked him if he still had a wish. Nothing but heaven was Philip's answer. Praying and silent, he went home in the evening about 7 o'clock p.m. On the table after his death was found a note on which was written, you will be freed from sin, freed from sorrows, and freed from the anger of the theologians. On April 21st, 1516, Philip Melanchthon was buried next to Martin Luther in the castle church of Wittenberg. In Latin, it is written on the grave slab, here rests the most venerable Philip Melanchthon body who died in the city in 1560, April 19th, after having lived 63 years, two months, and two days. And here we come to an end. I wish uh, the blessing of the Lord from this lecture. <laughs>